Hey guys, this is a webio. Yes, believe it or not, despite what you're seeing now, this will become a webio. Now, you may not be seeing Google Earth as you probably realize is not a hard C as I did in my earlier webios when I said, do you see it? Do you see it? This, it's pretty obvious. So before I get into this webio, I'd like to give an introduction on to what this web webio is about. It's on a little different thing that people don't really know about, so I want to educate people about it before I apply to an actual proposal. So let's see it. This is my first webio on the humble bus right here. I've done trains, nice swanky high speed trains, motorways, recently an airport as you have probably seen, but now a bus. However, that bus is more like this. Not that other old school bus. As you can see, these are nice, again, swanky, clean, brand new, eco-efficient buses. You would probably like to ride on one of these instead of that one, right? I did that reference just because I ended school a couple days ago and I had to ride a school bus just like that to school. I was in 12th grade and I rode a school bus. I didn't have a car, I didn't have a license. So that's what I had to do and I believe that regular commuters deserve much better than a school bus so this is the type of bus I'll be giving to them. Now as you can see this looks a lot like a metro line right? Like sidewalk height, floor, wheelchair access. It's essentially as if the sidewalk is a station platform and the bus is almost a train. Well guess what? This webio will be on bus rapid transit or BRT. Now what is bus rapid transit? It is a bus based mass transit system. So think about a subway line or railway line but instead of full railway trains serving it it would just be buses, low floor buses. There would still be ticketed stations as seen here so the stations would be really similar to how a regular metro station would be and it would be aimed to combine the capacity of and speed of railway transit at lower cost. At least that's what its aim is. I will say right now the speed is not going to be as high because trains can go much faster. Buses are limited by their own engines and more importantly how the road goes. But it's a really good mix between what a bus can do and what a train can do. Essentially going to a train station Instead of a train serving you, you just get a simple bus. Obviously not simple though, these are pretty luxurious as you can see here. This example is from Katriba, no, Kartiba, Brazil, if I pronounce that right. So there are two types of bus rapid transit. They're the standard bus lanes. This one is in London. And this is a grade separated busway. This one is in Adelaide, Australia. That's on the southern coast of Australia. Now bus lanes are closer to traffic. They're essentially just an extent like a part of the road. While busways have their own right of way. So chances are they'd be like on their own road or at the very least separated medians of other roads and not just simple lanes of an existing road. In general busways, the buses are not allowed access to any other lanes of the road while bus lanes they can use regular car traffic off the roads as well. This webio is on a grade separated busway. We are not doing bus lanes. I think busway is closer to how a real perimeter metro would be. So this is a layout of how the station would work. You would have the two bus lanes here. This would be if the busway is separated from any other road. You would have the platforms which are ticketed and then the bridge going above the busway towards the streets nearby. Now keep in mind these platforms are essentially sidewalk height. The buses will be low floor buses so it will be easy for handicapped people and also just all forms of easy movement inside the buses. Lots of doors, more than that school bus obviously I showed earlier, Te technically has two doors, front and back. This one has three doors if you use articulated buses which I think should be used for this particular route. And I'll get into what route this is in a couple minutes. Now BRT can also be used 
in the middle of a highway and literally all I did was added the two highway lanes. Now obviously this will be more than one lane each direction but this is just trying to depict how easy it is to implement this in the middle of a highway. It won't take that much space, essentially just two inner lanes. So highways may be the slight widening for a dedicated busway but I think doing that will allow easy integration of multimodal transportation in any inf given infrastructure bridge will go over the highways and the bus lanes same deal as before many times in a highway there will be a road here I didn't draw it but there will be a road here in which this bridge literally just becomes a sidewalk off so there's some advantages and disadvantages of bus rapid transit I'll go through the advantages first they're much cheaper to implement than rail building a road is much easier than building a railway and it's also because of that more quickly available. What I mean by that is that the construction time of a busway won't be as long as a railway, probably a third the time if it's done correctly at a reasonable pace for both. There will also be more frequent service, not necessarily higher capacity but more frequent service. A bus by its nature is going to be much smaller than a train so to maintain equal capacity there would be much more buses and thus more frequent service so you don't have to rely as much on the schedule as you would just coming to a station and hoping that a bus would show up it's also more scalable on steeper gradients what you'll figure out in this web view that I'll do after, right after this presentation is that the route goes through a lot of mountains if I tried to build a train line through all of them, it would be underground most of the time. This would be much cheaper and also much more interesting to ride. You'd be on the same level as a highway and not underground, missing the entire great big world above. Finally, and pretty importantly, feeder buses can serve more local areas to the system. So these buses can, while they're not part of the road, and you could still build ramps as exiting to regular automobile roads and they can serve your local street corner so imagine your local street corner bus coming taking you on this eventually on this magical busway and eventually dropping off right near your workplace on this new station so don't be this train here buses will be much easier to do trains you can do it on a road but don't be that train just don't that looks funny I know so before I get into the actual web view, I want to point out some disadvantages. They're slower than trains, especially my previous perimeter metros I've done. If you have seen my Philadelphia one or even my North Jersey one, that goes at up to 100 miles per hour. These will only be able to go up to 60 or 70 miles per hour. They're limited by the powers of the buses. Also, they cannot directly connect to rail. So sorry, no Rockland to Grand Central Rail. Now I kind of gave away part of the webio here, but what I'm trying to say is you can't connect, you can't basically, you can't drive a bus on a railway line as you could not drive a train on a road reasonably. Like that was an exception, but you can't be that bus as you can't be that train. Also, the existing roadways would have to be reconstructed and widened to, and they would still have a slightly reduced capacity. But either way, I still think that this would th these disadvantages would be outshaded by the new advantages that bus rapid transit would be giving towards the local community and budget of planners. So with that out of the way, enjoy the real Webio, which is coming up right now. Okay. So based on the previous webio, you can probably tell or have guessed that this webio is on the busway over the new Tappan Zee Bridge. It will connect just north of Hilburn in the west to Stamford in the east. This route will mostly follow the median of Interstate 287 and eventually the, in the median of Interstate 95 and it will connect through Rockland County Central Westchester County and Greenwich and Stamford in Connecticut. Now I'm using this route as first of all a transportation route and second of all as a bus rapid transit. Let's first get into transportation route. Now Interstate 287 is ridiculously crowded going east and west along the northern New York City metropolitan area. 
there is no major mass transit option to cross the Hudson River up here, not to mention to actually travel from Western Westchester to Eastern Westchester or White Plains to Stamford. You would think there would be, but sadly there's not. Now I'm doing this as a bus rapid transit because as I said in my presentation before, this route goes through a lot of hills and a lot of feeder routes can be used in Rockland County and Westchester County. So I think that using bus rapid transit for such a route would be the most easy and cost effective and successful solution in transporting the people throughout the tri-county region that this line serves. Okay, let's start in the west. Now these magenta lines are essentially flyovers. These are where buses coming from the north like New York State through it. For example, Middletown, Port Jervis, even Newburgh, New Windsor, those places. Buses can get off the highway here and right next to the existing railway line which I'll build a new grade separated busway. And this busway will continue. First stop will be Hilburn. It will have easy access towards both Interstate 287 south into New Jersey and cars from Interstate 87. So people driving who don't want to drive over Tappan Zee Bridge and Westchester County can easily get off their cars, park here and take the train, not train, bus rather, from Hilburn. I'm so used to doing trains, that's why it's weird saying buses. Next station is Suffern. Now Suffern is on the main line or Bergen County line of New Jersey Transit. And if you have seen my, I believe, fourth webio, I did a connection from Grand Central and Penn Station all the way through the Hudson River with a new electrified line up to Suffern. So people can transfer from the bus line towards the Bergen County and main lines, which can take a train towards Hudson County and eventually lower Manhattan by this route. So that's a throwback towards my fourth webio. I think you also like my throwback to the old Webview logo I showed you at the end of the presentation. So lots of old things coming back. In fact, later this Webview stuff from my very first Webview will be coming back as well. So now this line will continue along. Now this is an abandoned railway line, but I plan to cut up the rails and place a busway in its tracks, as I call it, literally. The next station is Airmont. Again right near Interstate 87 and 287. Now for such a case here, if it's grade, like if there's no grade separation, I think a really good solution is to either build a bridge, which would probably be the better option, but if that's not an option, do a busway crossing. You know what railway crossings are? Do a busway crossing, similar idea. So after Airmont, line will continue along the existing abandoned railway. Now return south from Route 87 and go underground here. It has to go underground here because there's a big hill here and more importantly, there's not enough room to make a busway with the right of way that the line has. So this is one of the few underground segments that this line will have to go through, but it's only 1.2 miles, so it's not that long. So it'll emerge just after the New York State Thruway just before Route 59. Next station is Monzi. So this is more of a shopping district, but again, a lot of suburbs. People can drive from the northern parts of Rockland County and transfer to the bus from here. So the line will continue and it will go to Spring Valley. Now Spring Valley is, I forgot to draw it here, but it's actually part of the Pascac Valley line. And if you remember again, my fourth web view, that's also one of the lines I was proposing to eventually connect to Penn Station via the new Hudson connection and it will be electrified as well. So this line can serve as an easy connection towards that line as well. So this is very similar to my Philadelphia Perimeter Metro in that it also serves as a longitudinal connection for people that ne not necessarily live by a railway line but they can take it a couple stops towards the main railway lines that will take them south into the city. So after Spring Valley, the line will continue along like this and it will deviate from the Pascac Valley line. Next station is Nanuet North. Now this station is in the median of Route 287 and 87, so 
if you saw my presentation you understand how the stations will work so again mainly a residential area next station is route 304 now this is mostly a commercial district but there are also some houses nearby it's also relatively easy access from the Palisades Parkway so after that you see these two magenta lines here now this is my first big example of feeder networks so buses coming from the Palisades like from the northern part of the Palisades Parkway can take one of these ramps to cross over to the inner part of the thruway which should be where the busway is this is a big deal because buses can go at a relatively high speed all the way up to the West Point area which is actually in Orange County and there are a lot of suburbs here that can be served directly there are also trains that will run here as seen by my fourth web yo again but I think bus is also required now there won't be any bus ways here this will just be standard local buses the ones that will pick you up at the corner but I think it's interesting that these very buses can get you onto the main road just like that main line rather main road and main line it is a road after all so continue along the median next station is West Nyack and this is on the West Hudson line now this railway line exists but there's no passenger service if you saw my fourth web yo again you will see that I propose a new electrified line on it going up to the West Point area it's also close towards the Palisades Mall which is right here Palisades Center so mall shoppers can easily get off here and go to the mall so the line will continue along the median of Interstate 87 and 287 next station is Nyack Nyack is an older town I think its population are around 15,000 right on the western banks of the Hudson River so I think building a station here would be really vital especially for making these people get to their destinations possibly in Westchester and even southwestern Connecticut so after that the busway will continue along the median and now I didn't really depict it here but it will split into two segments now I'll tell you a bit of the Tappan Zee Bridge the Tappan Zee Bridge was built in the 1950s really old and it was really rusty and crowded so what they decided to do was build a new bridge eight lanes two spans and it will be built to a higher engineering standard it's planned to be complete by the year 2019 and interestingly on the inner lanes of both spans you have an empty spot and that empty spot was meant for bus rapid transit guess what this bus rapid transit will be going right on that spot so it will increase to essentially more than 10 lanes I say more than 10 because it's 10 vehicle lanes but the but the grade separated busway would be two of the 10 lanes and buses have much higher capacity than cars otherwise what would be the point of buses besides maybe environmental implications but that's about it so I don't know the exact location of where the new span is all I do know is that it's just north of the existing one so it'll continue along the Hudson River on the new Tappan Zee Bridge and just before exiting it'll stop at South Terrytown now it's a big interchange station so existing Terrytown station will remain but there'll be a new South Terrytown station which will also be on the Metro North Hudson line for service to Grand Central Terminal now for my reference from Rockland to Grand Central direct train as I said you can't make this bus go on this line you could make a bus towards Grand Central direct but it would have to go on the major Deacon Highway and Interstate 87 towards that while it's still in Westchester County so I think just building a transfer station would be a much better solution collaborating the times between the buses arrive and when the trains arrive would also help so after that the line will continue the busway rather would continue along the median and now here it the busway will exit like some of it will exit for service towards southern Westchester so buses can serve the local areas down interstate 87 in this area even all the way down to Yonkers and connect to the busway in Rockland County and over the Tappan Zee Bridge meanwhile the rest of the busway will all follow interstate 287 eastbound through this interchange because it would be much difficult to like build a bridge and all that so I think building both 
the east and westbound lanes under this bridge here would be the only way that is really needed to be easily done. Now this road may need to be reconstructed but the right of way is wide enough to maintain the existing amount of lanes and add the busway and keep the shoulders on the outside. Maybe inside shoulders may need to be removed but the outside shoulders will remain. Nothing big to the interchanges themselves will be done besides the added bus entryways. So the next station is Emsford. Now this is interesting in that this is actually a bridge so think about my station diagram but the stairs actually go down underneath the highway and connect with the sidewalk there. Elmsford is a major industrial area comparatively towards the rest of the Westchester County area and there's also a lot of residential districts nearby so big like big inflow station as well. So next at the Sprainbrook Parkway also known as Route 987 there will be again more connecting roads that will connect buses serving local routes towards northern Westchester. So northern Westchester towards like the Rye area, Harrison, that's a pretty big market so I thought that building these connectors would be vital to serve that area easily on a single seat, on a single ticket even. So continuing along, Fairview, again another Town. I believe this has a couple more office complexes, some shops, some houses. Little different than Elmsford because there are more offices but same idea. Now here's where it gets interesting. This line will go underground through White Plains. I was thinking of making this continue through the median but it would be too far north of downtown White Plains to really be effective. Plus White Plains has a working population of more than 250,000 during the daytime. That's quite a bit of people. So I thought that building the line through White Plains going east-west would be the only way to maximize the potential of this line through this area. This is all underground. This would essentially be a two-lane road underground with stations at where I pointed them. So first of the five White Plains stations, yes there are five of them, is Route 124. Now this is like the extreme western part of White Plains. I say extreme western because the next station is something similar to what I just said just now. But it's the extreme western portion. Also cars coming from Interstate 287 can take this exit onto Route 119 here and park at the Route 124 station and take the train towards their work in White Plains because White Plains parking is very bad. So after that the line will continue underground and turn towards the east from the south and you guessed it West White Plains. Now I believe the station is just called White Plains but I called it West White Plains because it is on the western side of the downtown and it's also there are also other stations in White Plains so I wanted to call this West White Plains to give a general sensation of where this station is located. It has a connection towards the Metro North Harlem line and all trains on this line stop here. Maybe a couple to southeast and I think Wasaic I think is its northern limit. They may skip here but I think I don't know I honestly don't know this right now but I know North White Plains is a terminus of local trains. I believe some expresses to southeast, if not all, still south stop at this station right here. But if not, I believe they should. The station has a capacity for every single train to stop here. So if basically what I'm saying is, I believe all trains stop here, but if not, they should on this on the Harlem line. Now continuing on along the bus line, all, people can also get off from here to go to work here. But people from the bus line and also the railway line, believe it or not, can get off at the station and get onto the bus line. So Metro North travelers, especially from northern Westchester, can get off here and go on this underground line. Now it looks like it's in the middle of the road, kind of like that train I showed in the presentation. But this is all underground. So it'll continue through. Next station is Renaissance Square. This is the main shopping district just north of the Galeria and lots of towers here. I believe New York's highest tower outside New York City and I believe Queens County I think has a higher one as well but this is the highest building 
in Westchester, right here, Renaissance Square. So after Renaissance Square, the line will continue throughout downtown, go to Broadway, again another station. This is more of a residential area, so people who live here can easily take the bus way to work in the main commercial part of downtown. And finally, while staying underground, East White Plains. East White Plains will have parking for people exiting the Cross Westchester Expressway, also known again as Interstate 287. So people can park here and not have to park in actual downtown White Plains. After East White Plains, the underground busway will continue and emerge back in the median of Interstate 287. Not much later though, I have and a feeder route actually going outwards towards Route 684. Now 684 goes to northeastern Westchester. Think of Katuna, think of Cruton Falls, North Salem, even all up to all the way up to Brewster. So buses can come down this entire route relatively quickly. Airmont also, that's where IBM's headquartered. I think that's a big market. So I think buses, especially up there, would work. Now again, those would just be local buses, but they would have the ability to join any other buses on this great separated busway. Just after that is Purchase. Purchase, as you probably know, is a headquarters of PepsiCo, also known as simply Pepsi. I am actually pretty indifferent towards Pepsi and Coke, but they're both good companies. I would say that Pepsi's specialty drinks, for example, Mountain Dew and Sierra Mist are much better, but I don't drink soda that much to begin with, so I don't really have much opinions on that. Anyways, Purchase, besides that, have a lot of other businesses nearby, so people can easily get off here and go towards where they work. Continuing along, it will continue across the Hutchinson Parkway, staying on the median. Rybrook is the next station. After that, it will continue. Now it enters, it approaches rather Interstate 95, and the next station is North Rye. Now, North Rye, I kind of misplaced this actually. It should be here. You want me to do it? I'll do it just for you. It's there. Yeah, North Rye will be on the New Haven line. I'm not sure if I should just replace this station, move it up here with like a sidewalk going up to Interstate 287 but I think building a station here with an interchange to the New Haven line will allow easier connection towards central and western part of Westchester and Rockland County and beyond. So here this was where my video was about to end but then I was thinking Stamford's not too far away and Westchester to Stamford is a pretty big market. Not to mention that Interstate 95 is ridiculously choked in this segment here. So doing a reconstruction while maintaining six lanes while adding the busway would not really infringe on property rights all that much. And if you remember from my first web view, I literally said this. The biggest challenge to building any infrastructure project is not money in most cases, but rather property rights. Well, property rights are not really harmed here. In fact, this entire project will not destroy a single home. So the busway will continue and join the median of the New England Thruway, also known as Interstate 95. This bridge brings us into Connecticut, Fairfield County to be specific. First station is South Greenwich. South Greenwich is not really served by any transportation. They could drive into Port Chester but this is closer to the South Greenwich neighborhoods. And also, again, people from Interstate 95 can get off here. So it just stays on the median of Interstate 95. Next station is Central Greenwich. Now this is really close to the existing, I think the Metro, Metro North station is just called Greenwich and nothing else, but it's in the Central Park. I didn't really want to call this North Greenwich because Greenwich extends all the way up the panhandle here. So calling it North would be really misleading. So I called it Central. Greenwich is, I think, a city, city actually, by Connecticut standards, of around seven to 8,000 people. It's among the wealthiest towns in the nation. And I would imagine a lot of people here, in addition to working in New York City, would also work in Westchester County. 
so building a busway station here is vital for a one ticket access to their jobs. So the line will continue along Interstate 95. Next station is Coscob again now this happens to be right on the Metro North line so probably even a sidewalk can connect towards the existing Metro North New Haven line station. This is all on the median. Next station is North Riverside. Now the existing Riverside station is further south but North Riverside will serve the more inner areas of Greenwich and also like Route 1. Like the Route 1 corridor is kind of missed by the New Haven line so I think building a station up here naturally where Interstate 95 would go would be a good idea rather than having to skip it. Now the line will enter Stamford. First station out of three in Stamford is Waterside. Waterside is a new upcoming district. Lots of new residential areas and also gentrification happening here. There's also quite a bit of industry in this area, especially for the wharfs to the south. This is still in the median, but just after Waterside, the line the busway rather would go underground and this would be a deep underground because it would have to go under the canal here and it will go to Stamford South also known as simply Stamford Railway Station where Metro North, Amtrak and if you go way back to October of 2014 when I made my first web view from New York to Boston high speed rail remember the one with you could see the entire computer it was a different computer back then that's this station the regional high speed stop would be here. People coming from all the way the Boston area can take the train quickly here in around 1 hour 45 minutes and take the busway towards, for example, White Plains for business. So this route can also be used as a business connector. It's an extension towards the high speed line as well. This is underground directly underneath the station and all New Haven line trains obviously that go up here, they don't stop at like New Rochelle or anything like that. They go and stop here. This station also has five tracks so it's pretty big. So after Stamford South I made the line continue north. I didn't end it there. It ends at Stamford Broad Street. Now that's like more the central part of downtown so I think connecting people both from the busway directly and indirectly from the New Haven line from the north towards Stamford Broad Street by this one connection be vital to increase ridership of both Metro North and the busway. It would serve more local communities by that. So that's it. I know that this was also a long web view. I think my last three web views have all been more than like 24 minutes. I've not really timed this one yet. I'll figure out how long this was. But I think building such a busway and especially a busway instead of a railway is vital for developing a cost effective integrated solution that will connect all the northern New York City suburbs from the west to the east. Thank you for watching and goodbye.